Welcome, welcome to what's been uh, once called the greatest backpacking live show on earth, and of course that was just by me. Um, but it's been a long time since I've done one of these, and it's been a little bit of a learning curve, kind of getting back into the swing of things. Uh, let me make sure that uh, you guys will let me know in the chat, of course, if audio is off or synced improperly. Uh, hopefully that is the case, that it sounds okay on your end, um, but it's been too long. It's been too long, and so hopefully we get back into the swing of thing. And it looks like uh, the chat is already hopping, um, and so I'm looking forward to seeing that. If you're watching in the replay, of course, or listening to me, kind of like a podcast, um, we're going to cover some backpacking news stuff that has been in the headlines, um, as well as things that affect the backpacking community right now. We answer some questions live, of course, um, but it looks like in the chat we have some people who are ready to go hiking in the White Mountains, and like I said at last meetup, that's the one area that I've always wanted to uh, be in. It's just a matter of drive time to get there. Um, yeah, these are, I don't know why, Ram, I took so long to kind of get back into swing of things with these. It just takes a little bit of uh, effort to kind of carve out some time for it in the schedule to get live backpacking Q&As going, but it was always a fun time just hanging out with you guys in the chat and just talking backpacking stuff. Tom, yeah, now you're on the West Coast. We can, we can hang out now. Coming to the DAX, I'm assuming he's talking about the Adirondacks. Someone's asking in the chat. Uh, the Adirondacks is, I've been there a few times just doing some day hiking. I know Rick has tried to get on me to make sure I get out there. And so maybe sometime I'll be out there. Um, you never know. You never know. The Adirondacks. So welcome to everyone. Um, and yeah, let me make sure I'm all caught up. Everything looks like it's sounding good. But yeah, one. One of the things I was thinking we, we would do or start off with is uh, let's switch our scenes so we kind of see what's going on with with us here. But I wanted to draw your attention to a great bit of, um, I guess, conversation going around this uh, new sleeping pad, our value um, and uh, sectionhiker.com. The link is in the description. It's one of the places that kind of got me thinking about this. I know Bigfoot recently did a video just asking questions overall about our value explaining what it is and um, I know another youtuber who is planning on kind of delving into this issue but I just want to make you guys aware of this link and this interview by section hiker talking about uh, our value in sleeping pads which is really interesting to see uh, talking about how they're now creating a standard and I, I believe and you know don't crucify me if I'm wrong but I believe one of the reasons this whole thing started is because um, retailers like REI wanted to make sure they had a consistent way to compare uh, the R values of uh, different sleeping pads. And some sleeping pad manufacturers, what they end up doing is they use uh, temperature ratings. So I'm calling out Big Agnes right now. Um, you guys know my experience with that Big Agnes uninsulated pad and how the temperature rating was inaccurate. And it just it varies so widely. It's nice to have the idea of having a standard rating system for sleeping pads. And so what he's talking about here is just having that new industry standard. Um, you know, our value just kind of uh, just checking out, making sure that you're getting a consistent rating between each um, each sleeping pad. So our value measuring. Uh, I, I suggest you read this um, this interview uh, by Section Hiker because it's really good. Um, and that's why, you know, you guys know, know I, I typically will use my Neo Air X-Therm year round um, because I wanted to make sure that I stay warm. But our value measuring, you know, how an object, in this case a sleeping pad, resists flow uh, from one side to another. And the greater the R value, of course, the warmer the pad will be. Uh, and my X-Therm is fantastic, even though some people don't like it. <laughs> um, it's interesting to see like Thermarest already does this, already does this uh, testing. And so they're not, you know, they've, they've consistently put out our values, which is great to see. Um, but I don't know if they'll be doing independent uh, testing or if each manufacturer is going to do their own testing. But the link for this is in the description. And so you should go ahead and check it out. But he answers some basic questions in here. Like if you stack um, <laughs> Restless is trying to break into the chat with <laughs> I'll go ahead and show this message so the people in the chat can see there we go <laughs> um, but if our value uh, you know seeing if you can stack pads can you get uh, is our value additive 
And the answer he says is yes. And so it's interesting to kind of see when they're talking about this stuff. Um, just discussing R value in general, I think it's important that we finally get an overall standard because uh, right right now there's nothing. And so thank you. Uh, I know Wayfaring Ways is in the chat, but thanks to uh, uh, REI for for being one of the big reasons I think that we're, we're getting this standard, kind of like that we do for sleeping bags right now. And so eventually if we have that for uh, sleeping pads, I think it's just gonna make it a lot better. So let's see, questions in the chat, uh, going back to when are you coming back down to Red River Gorge? Red River Gorge is always in my mind because it's so close and it's nice and easy to get to. Um, there are several backpacking trips on the agenda for the for the year, but nothing is set. Uh, there's also one bike packing trip in the agenda um, set as well. I always have these tentative dates, I'm checking to make sure that uh, these dates work for people if they want to come. Um, but Red River Gorge is one of the areas that's on there. Uh, it's probably going to be a quicker trip because I feel like um, a lot of the stuff that we have left to do in the gorge now is going to be off trail. And so if we can get uh, Adam, the Sierra Photog, to kind of show us around again, um, he's just one person I feel really comfortable with going off trail in the gorge because he's so good at it. Uh, let's see, questions in the chat. Our value loves the AXL pad. Yeah, unfortunately, the uninsulated didn't work for me, Huck. Uh, REI has been pushing on standard R value, but pushing sustainability standards more. Oh, Jason H, this is a good question. Hey, Tim, what do you do to train for your hike, uh, specifically for maroon bells? And so, um, Jason, that's a great question. Uh, lots of things. Um, the big thing I do is I pack walk whenever I can. So you can't see it, but down here I have my training pack. It's all loaded up. It has water. It has just extra gear in it that I don't necessarily need. I don't have to worry about it being uh, compressed. And I try to walk with that as much as I can. Walking the dog is another thing I, I try to do. But I also recently started a, a training regimen, if you will, uh, where I train at the gym three times a week. A, a lot of it's uh, weightlifting, but I call it the, the Karate Josh method of weightlifting. I started with him in December um, following his workout routine, which is a lot of lifting weights. But you also kind of end and you, you I don't want to say burn yourself out, but that's what you, you do. You kind of go to fatigue, um, but it's quick. It's high intensity for me. And then you have like these short bursts of cardio. So we always end with cardio. We always end with things like push-ups, uh, uh, pulling uh, rope, kind of like CrossFit type of stuff at the very end. And then one day a week, I focus exclusively on cardio. So uh, throughout my entire workout, what I end up doing is I do things like um, uh, use a stair stepper a lot. I do uh, bike riding a lot whenever I can um, and running on the treadmill. Um, so like uh, I break it at least in 15 minute increments on my cardio day, 15 minutes of stair stepper and I watch my heart rate to make sure I'm in that cardio range and I can kind of hit the peak range occasionally. Um, and then I go to the bike and the treadmill and I try to increase the incline of the treadmill as much as I can. So I think if you use that stair stepper, uh, Jason, or you walk stairs and you pack walk, I think you'll be ready. But the big thing I check is that I can make sure I can run, this sounds silly, but I check my mile time. I make sure I can run a mile in at least 10 minutes and I feel confident if I kind of keep up with that, that um, things will be good for me. Uh, so Restless Outdoors is almost a $3,500. And by the way, that is totally a scam. You're not you're not getting a, a all expense paid backpacking trip with, with me. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see, make sure I'm answering these questions. Uh, thank you. I, I do enjoy my stash. It actually needs to be trimmed now uh, recently. Uh, okay, any new gear that I'm trying out right now? So that's a really good question. So there, there's some new gear that I'm using right now that you're actually going to see reviews for recently. Uh, I'm sorry, coming up here soon. Uh, one as soon as Monday, the Sawyer Micro, uh, that review is coming out on Monday, um, as well as the Tarp Tent Rain Shadow. Uh, I've kind of fully tested those. and I feel comfortable enough putting out a review that I can let you know how exactly how I feel like it works. Um, some other ones that I'm trying out, I've actually purchased the REI Flash 45. I know what you're thinking. Are you going back to packs like that and the Osprey? And no, I'm probably not going to go back to packs like that. 
The big reason I went ahead and made that purchase is because I wanted a training pack. I wanted a training pack and I wanted an extra pack for someone my height. Because right now I only have uh, two packs and that, those are the Z-Packs Arc Hall and I have the Superior Wilderness Designs 30 and now I have the RI Flash 45. Uh, I have two other brothers and they both wanted to go with me but they both needed loadouts. I could supply one but I couldn't supply two so I needed an extra pack. And so that's why I picked up the Flash 45. And I've been, I'm not doing a review yet, but surprisingly impressed by it. Uh, it was very reasonable cost. I think it was on sale, so it was only like 70 bucks. And I, I've been really impressed with it so far. Uh, other things that I'm trying out right now, I'm looking at my list here. Yes, I purchased two new headlamps. I'm going to check them both out. But that's the... Um, Black Diamond Spotlight I have, I've been testing recently, and I also purchased the Nightcore NU25, just to go ahead and uh, check that. So that's that's the gear right now that's on tap, that's, you haven't seen me open or anything like that, but it's been in the works, and I'm working on making sure I, I, I get to it. Um, let's see, stash tips. All I do is man, I saw that it grow. <laughs> uh, when adding something like Reflectix, uh, do you play closer to you or the other side of the pad? So you're asking if I put it between the, um, the pad and the ground or my body and, uh, the pad. I would say for me, it would depend on the pad and like let's say if it's, it's the X therm uh, for example, the R value is supposed to be additive. Like we just looked at that interview from um, uh, Thermarest on there, but like a piece of reflectus, I probably would put it closer to my body. Honestly, um, with the X therm, I'm not exactly sure because the X therm, for example, is so reflective in terms of its heat. I wouldn't want to miss out on that. So I would play around with it and just honestly see which one feels warmer to you. Uh, Devin, backcountry exposure. Hey, I like to load my pack and do step ups on my coffee table. That's a really good idea for a workout. And so there's a lot of workout stuff. And check the chat if you're watching the replay because there are lots of good ideas here about how to stay uh, in shape. But a lot of stair stepping, stair climbing is what I try to do, or uh, running, walking on a treadmill at the maximum incline. Actually, will do wonders. I think. I I honestly think that the the maximum incline on the um, treadmill is a better workout or more uh, more similar to walking on the trail than the stair stepper is, depending on where you're going. Have I ever considered hiking Isle Royale? Greg is asking, and the answer to that is yes. I, hi I consider hiking a lot of places. Uh, a lot of the times, why I don't go to a place is because is when the travel time starts to eat into the hiking time, and so that's why. Um, I mentioned before that when I go on trips, I look for things that are within like uh, eight hours drive or so, eight to 10 hours. Any more than that, an IRL would be a lot further because of the ferry and making sure I get up there. Um, once it starts getting past 10 hours, then I'm like, eh, it's just so much time traveling back and forth to the trailhead. I'd rather almost fly. So that's why like uh, the Western trips out to Colorado and flying out to flying into Denver, I don't mind those as much because it's you're flying, you're out there, you drive a couple hours and you're in the trailhead. Um, whereas, I don't know, 15 hours driving or 12 to 15 hours driving just seems like it's for the birds. Hey, SBO brothers are in the house. Lots of people in the house. Oh, I'm scrolling past here. Let's see. Fred is talking about that REI Flash 45. Yeah, once I saw the Flash 45 on sale, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get it. What am I buying with my REI dividend is one of the questions in the chat. And I don't know quite yet. I usually have a list uh, going, Devin, but probably something like um, something boring, honestly. Uh, the I I'm gonna think about replacing or or get, getting an updated version of my Solomon Speed Cross. Get the, another four to set it up. But I'm also looking at a tent, um, researching different tents uh, for a possible Western trip where I might be going by myself. And so I'm not sure exactly what um, I'm going to be using. Hey, Tim. Tim's in the chat. Uh, are you doing winter hike soon? Wayne is asking. Um, I am not doing a winter hike. Uh, I already just I just did one. 
in January. I usually try to do one of those. Winter is usually my time where I, um, for my wife's sake and my kid's sake, I tend to stay in a little bit more. I go on one winter hike and then I'm pretty much done until, let's see, starts to warm up in March or April. Uh, Huck is asking any trips out west this year. The hope is yes, Huck. So there will be a western trip. I already kind of alluded to it. Keeping that one a little closer to the chest until it actually happens, though. Um, so I won't be sharing exactly what I'm doing. But yeah, there will be a western uh, trip this year. Is fingers crossed. Uh, I'm planning on getting a Superior Woolens Designs pack. Someone's mischief on the trail is saying in the chat. Quick question, I'm thinking the frameless 35. So question, uh, when do you get uncomfortable with the 30 uh, weight wise? I had a, Once you keep your base weight uh, 10 pounds or lower, I think you'll be fine. Um, I would feel comfortable, I don't know about total weight, um, but base weight just under 10 pounds and let's say uh, two liters of water, that's 4.4 pounds, 14.4 is where we're at. And then let's say four, uh, four days worth of food, uh, let's say a max of six pounds more, so about 20 pounds. If I could stand under 20 pounds with a superior than 30, I think I'd feel comfortable. Uh, let's see, questions, coffee table step-ups, Reflectix. Uh, oh, this is a great question. Uh, let's see, which do I prefer more, the hike or the camp? I would say the hike more. I like relaxing in camp, uh, but honestly, that's one reason I I do uh, I like backpacking is because you get to move on, and so some people are like well, you know people are really camping oriented, and that's why you tend to see more like uh, backpacking chairs or things to make the camp experience more comfortable. Um, I'm more into the whole backpacking experience where you get to walk and go on. It's not necessarily about crushing miles. It's just the experience of moving on again, seeing something different in that area. And so usually when I plan my trips, I usually enjoy to plan them around vistas, waterfalls, lakes, things like that. Uh, Mike is talking about Colorado. I know I'd be, be nice. I know uh, Collegiate Peaks has still been on my mind, Mike. Always. Uh, JK is hiking. How much closer are you to finally uh, getting to do the JMT? We'll see. That's one that's uh, definitely on the list, and it's I think it's a doable uh, through hike. Reflective things like Reflectix reply on a gap to be effective. Hi from Ohio. Uh, let's see. I know Ram. I'm talking about tents. Yes, I purchased uh, the new headlamp. Uh, Ram, just it's it's one of those areas that I'm planning on going out west where. Um, there's too many good campsites at elevation, uh, so there are zero trees available. And so that's one reason why I'm, I'm looking at a tent. Um, I know, I never thought I'd say it. Uh, you're going to see a tent review in a couple weeks probably, and you're going to think that ham uh, Tim has completely gone away from hammocks, and that's not the case. Um, still the best night's sleep. It's just out west. Um, it just becomes really difficult to do. Uh, <laughs> is 2020, 2019 finally the year for Ohio backpack? And those of you guys don't know, I have a dirty, uh, dark secret uh, that lots of people give me a hard time for and about. And it's that I have never actually backpacked in Ohio. I know you're thinking, but Tim, I've seen you like at Mohican and you've hiked in Hocking Hills. Yes, I've hiked a lot of Hocking Hills. I consider a backpacking trip to be something that's uh, multi-day where you hike to a camp or, or location and then you wake up and you hike a little bit more. And that's my, my definition for personal backpacking, I guess. And so actually I've never done that. We'll, we'll see. Maybe a shakedown trip would be a good idea, Alex. Uh, Sarah is asking, when you fly to a trip destination, do you have to check your backpack? And if so, how do you protect it? Uh, typically, my backpack has been big enough that, yeah, I, I have to protect it. And uh, sorry, I have to check it. And so how I do that, Sarah, is I get a uh, right now I have an REI duffel bag of some kind. I don't remember what it's called. Um, it's Karate Josh has an airport tran airport, an Osprey transporter, I think, or airport transporter. And uh, Subaru Josh, what he has is he just has an army surplus duffel bag and it works well. Shove your backpack in there. Uh, if you have hotel clothes or stuff like that you want to bring along, 
uh, you can shove that in there as well. And that way it gets protected from like the conveyor belts and just getting tossed around a whole lot. So far it's worked well for me. Oh, let's see, questions in the chat. Lots of good questions in the chat. I'm not even getting to my note card of stuff, which is fine. Yep, you can still carry it as a, uh, a carry-on too if you'd like. But if it's big enough, I just shove it in a duffel bag and be good. Have I ever thought about kayak or canoe camping? And the answer to that is yes, I've thought about it. Uh, but honestly, the, the thing that stay, that makes me stay away from kayak or canoe camping, I don't know why my right ear is itching me so much. But anyway, I think it's all the lights. <laughs> uh, the big reason why I haven't done that is I just feel like kayak, kayak kayaking is more of a relaxing experience for me. I just like to float kayak when I feel like it. And I just feel like the pressure to complete a loop or to make miles in the kayak would detract from the experience. So occasionally... I'll float down the Mohican River or at the Hocking Hills area, but I typically don't kayak or canoe camp. Yes, Sean, I was going to talk about that, the the hiker, or sorry, the trail runner who killed the mountain lion. And of course, it's got uh, a lot of my family, uh, my mom and stuff like that, freaked out and like, Tim, you should not be going out there by yourself. And I tell her, you know, typically I, I don't, but mountain lions... We don't have to worry about as much on the East Coast, um, if at all. Usually black bear is the only thing, and a lot of them are kind of scared to take off if they see you. But yeah, I think what he did is pretty impressive. Thank goodness it was a, a more juvenile mountain lion, and he was able to kind of keep his wits. And he did not have earbuds in, which I think is huge. People um, sometimes forget exactly how much... Uh, that detracts from not only the whole experience but also just takes away your senses and so he heard that mountain lion or he just heard a, a brush and he turned around and he saw the mountain lion was ready to charge him um, and if you haven't heard the story it locked onto his his wrist and he you know it was scratching clawing at him trying to take him down he fell down uh, the side of the mountain a little ways i think um, and then he eventually uh, pinned his back legs with his one of his knees and then pinned because uh, it, it's still locked around his wrist pinned uh, the neck uh, with his other knee and he suffocated that way and then he he was justifiably terrified that maybe another mountain lion or the you know the mom would be uh, of that juvenile would be nearby and attack him again and so you know sure enough i think he was right to be afraid because i think when they uh, he finally got down the mountain and he came back it tried to find the mountain lion it was already half eaten so who knows what else was out there uh scavenging uh dollar blazing you're not too late 848 we've been going for about almost 30 minutes now so yeah you're still about halfway there uh let's see helman dollar has recommended the lunar and i recommend the lunar design solo so that's really good i i've seen it and let's see I will bust out a tent this year like I was talking about. Um, I'm not super happy about it, <laughs> but the opportunity to go where I, I'm going is, is a good one. Well, planning on going. Once again, fingers crossed. Uh, Jason from Outdoor Adventures is here, and he hasn't seen me live in forever, and that's exactly right. I just kind of got out of the routine, like I mentioned before, as well as the mic sound wasn't syncing as well, and I was kind of getting annoyed with it, so I was like, okay. I'll, I'll just be done for a little while. Uh, yep. Yep. My preferred camp spot, Creek in Trees or Alpine Lake by the Peak? For me, I would have to say right now, uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. I, I'm going to say Alpine Lake by the Peak would be would be fun to do. Uh, the thing I'm always concerned about is altitude. Being from Ohio, I'm at 700 feet above sea level or 70 feet above 70, <laughs> 70 feet above sea level. Um, and it's always an issue for me. And so I want to say creek in the trees because it's relaxing, but Alpine Lake by the peak is cool. Like when we uh, came off uh, Rocky Sea Mountain Pass, uh, Rocky Sea Pass in Utah, uh, that was one of the most incredible uh, camp spots I've ever been in where you saw the sunset, the sun was setting over the pass and it was just constantly changing. It was just amazing, amazing. And Utah, if you haven't gone, is just just beautiful. 
Uh, let's see. Scott is asking, Tim, can you suggest a decent, lightweight, packable rain jacket for a bigger guy? I'm around 6'2", 230, and have trouble finding a jacket that I can feel comfortable in. Scott, you're in luck because that's exactly, well, you're pretty close to my overall weight and height. And I would say for me, I like the Outdoor Research Helium 2. Um, some people have not liked it. They've moved on to like the, the Montvel uh, Versal Versalite, I think is the name of it. Um, but I like the Outdoor Research Helium 2. And I make sure that I, uh, if I'm feeling, uh, if it's summertime, I take the large version and I actually have an extra large for winter. And so if you want something that's kind of baggy or looser, I, I enjoy that. And Frozen is, by the way, going to be on the AT if you guys are watching uh, on the replay and in the chat coming up here soon. And uh, make sure you check out his channel if you have not already. I'm sure most of you guys who are watching um, have watched his channel in the in the past, if not if not currently. Um, so good luck on the AT Frozen, and I'm going to really enjoy uh, watching you and rooting for you as you continue to kind of eat up miles, but also just enjoy the experience. Uh, I think that's just an amazing time to just be by yourself somewhat and think. Uh, quick question from Dixon Outdoors. Who do I think would win it in a fight to the death? A full-grown male grizzly bear or a silverback gorilla? I'm going to go with the grizzly bear. I just think they're so aggressive and uh, they're, I think their evolution and it just has kind of create or has develop them to the point where they're like a can be a potential killing machine <laughs> okay let's see Devin from backcountry exposures asked me what tent am i considering to get i've been looking at some of the mass producers tents so i have been looking at the big agnes uh copper spur um line of tents but i've also been looking at uh, the tarp tent uh single person tent so they, i've been looking Heavily at the moment DW, I think it's called, as well as uh, the oh name escapes me. They're redoing oh the Bofin One, I think is what they're redoing. So I'm really looking heavily at those. The Bofin One is coming out in this spring. So I've been messaging Tarp Tent, being like, hey, do you have an exact date when I could try this thing out? And of course, I'll be purchasing it. Um, and so, but I, I just like the idea of. Um, 30D, I'm, you know, not knocking z packs or the Cuban fiber stuff at all, but I, I really want something a little bit more durable, as abrasion resistant, and I, I just, I enjoy my Rain Shadow 3, so I want to make sure that I'm also, uh, I'll probably look at another tarp tent to see exactly what is out there, to see what they're doing. Hey, John, good evening to you too. Uh, Jason's asking which poop trial I'm using. I haven't had that question for a while. I'm still continuing to use the Chi Wiz Big dig um i think it continues to be a good balance of something that's lightweight and really easily usable right alongside it has a very interesting a very good point i think to make uh no need to worry about mountain lions because statistically it's not going to be how anyone you ever know will die five deaths in the last 20 years in north america and most are confused juveniles and so i always tell people that when they like my my mom or whoever gets concerned about um animal attacks or making sure that I'm safe. And I continue to take measures to uh, avoid wildlife encounters like those. Uh, but statistically, you're, I think you're almost like going to get hit by lightning twice or something like that for some of these uh, potential animal attacks. Uh, Uptrill is asking about backpacking chairs, when I'm going to finally decide to buy one. Uh, probably when Mass Drop gets one. They've had one occasionally, um, like the a a light, I think uh, A light has a series of, of backpacking chairs that I kind of like, and I'll, I'll probably get one off of Mass Drop. Uh, Jamie's asking, hey, what do you prefer in shoes, Gore-Tex or non-Gore-Tex? It depends on the season. Uh, so if we're talking winter, I prefer Gore-Tex. If we're talking other three seasons, it's going to be non-Gore-Tex. I think mean, it's breathable, it's going to be dries fast. Um, I try to push the, the breathable shoes uh for as far as I can. Uh, oh, yep, yep, yeah, let's see. Yeah, Rocky Sea Pass was amazing, Devin. Never been to Scotland. Um, 
Sean, but generationally, I don't know if I've, you, you know this or not, but my family is from Scotland on my dad's side a couple generations back. That's the, the last name of Watson. And my dad actually went to the University of Edinburgh. Edinburgh, I think is how you call it. And I, I still remember that. And, and so, yeah, I have a lot of heritage from Scotland, believe it or not. Any new books worth mentioning? Yes, it's a it's a kind of a nerd question, but yes, I've actually been reading. Still, I'm reading. Uh, you may have seen it. I think in the last video behind me, it's uh, the Radium Girls, and it's a non-fiction book, but it's kind of written like a novel. And I'm still in the middle of it. It's a fantastic read. It's a little scary, a little terrifying, uh, but it's it's a good one. Talking about those uh, dial painters who used radium in the luminous paint of painting the watch hands. And they used to call lip pointing. They used to dip it in the luminous paint and then to get the bristles to kind of be very, very fine, uh, put it in their mouths. And so a lot of them died or had major issues, of course, with uh, radiation, radium poisoning, uh, holes in their jaws, things that didn't heal. So yeah, you, you'll have to read it, but very good. <laughs> yeah, right, Jason. <laughs> uh, Outdoor Adventures is saying he canceled the AT. So no, that, that's not the case. <laughs> uh, section hiking. I, I, yeah, so I touched on this briefly, but DCF tents, I just, I've seen them and I love how light they are. I just don't really, if you've noticed that even with my tarp, I, I don't use a DCF tarp. It's not because I don't want to lay out the money, even though they are pretty pricey. I just don't, I don't like the the look and the feel of them. Uh, this sounds really weird, but they, they're just crinkly and they don't remind, they, they don't feel like, I don't know, they, they're not, they're not comfortable to me, I guess is a good way to put it. It's just something that I've, I'm staying away from a DCF shelter or tarp right now. Maybe at some point I'll go to it um, just to check it out. Um, but it, it, the durability and abrasion stuff concerns me but it, I just don't like the look and the feel of it. <laughs> okay, so if, if you have... Uh, <laughs> this question is about the REI CEO stepping down. I believe he got the raw end of the deal. And actually, I had that um, on tap to... Oop, there we go. I had that on tap to talk about um, kind of the REI CEO stepping down, I thought was... In, uh, just a brief read, and and uh, I have this link in the description if you're interested in reading about it. I I think it's interesting. I, I guess it depends on um, oh what's what's the word on on not only the the nature of the relationship. And I'm glad. I mean, he's he's an adult. He's a grown up. He can um, do whatever he'd like as long. I, I guess it depends on if it affected or impacted any business decisions. Decisions. Supposedly, it was someone else in the outdoor space and I don't know if he was giving preferential treatment to a specific product because of that relationship so that's why I I kind of wanted to just touch briefly on it I just thought it was interesting enough to um, to mention that I, I don't know why I, I was surprised that he got well I guess he resigned uh, for it but uh this question is from Robin Hikes. Would you rather fight one frozen-sized squirrel or 100 squirrel-sized <laughs> frozen? I, you know, I think uh, Frozen from Outdoor Adventure does a lot of working out, and he's a pretty strong, wiry guy. So I'm going to go with, like, one frozen-sized squirrel is who I'd rather fight. <laughs> Another good question, fun question. Who would win a wrestling match between Frozen and the wrestling one? Um, that's going to be frozen. <laughs> uh, any changes in trekking poles? This question is from Samuel. I keep going back and forth, Samuel, between um, the Black Diamond Z poles still, as well as the Z-Pax carbon fiber poles. Um, that's kind of what I've been using consistently. Honestly, trekking poles is one of those areas where I think it doesn't really matter what you use. As long as it's something that is pretty stable, doesn't slip a whole lot, I think you'll be fine. Um, I know Restless and some other guys in the outdoor YouTuber community are trying to get me to try out the Gossamer Gear super light poles that are really expensive, and I'm not quite sure about that, um, but maybe someday. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's see. Tarp ten, yeah, Tarp 10 is great. They've been really fantastic. Uh, Michael Keeney is saying that that turkey dinner casserole from Mountain House is the bomb. And I I do enjoy Mountain House uh, turkey dinner casserole. I, I mentioned to you guys before, and I have to mention it again. I'm a uh, Mountain House ambassador, and I actually quite have here. Let's see. A new Mountain House meal. Fuzili pasta. And so I have not tried it out yet. I'm about to, but it's it's new. So if you want to try it out, let me know what you think. And uh, email me or something. Let's see. Okay. Beefficial60 asks this question. Curious how you get to the trailhead after flying in from out of state. Leaving a rental car to sit at the trailhead sounds expensive. It depends on the area, but that's exactly what we've done uh, so far when we fly out of state. Is we have had a rental car just sit at the trailhead for uh, the four pass loop, and that worked out pretty well. Um, I think we we checked out to see what it would be like to drop it off to somewhere else or get an Uber, and it worked out to be more uh, more financially responsible to leave it at the trailhead. Um, one of the great rental cars websites website that I use is actually, I have never heard anyone use it. And the website looks really janky when you go to it, but it's auto slash.com www.autoslash.com. And pretty much you put in the information that you want, like in terms of your, you don't put in any of your personal information yet, details for the car stuff, and they search for you. And so I don't know who's doing this, but they'll send you the best prices for uh, cars in the area. You'd be at, you know, Enterprise or uh, Hertz or any anyone like that. And they so far have had like rock bottom prices. Best I've seen. Uh, <laughs> Sean, you're very kind, Sean. Sean says I sound very intelligent, like a teacher or something. I feel like this stuff should be part of the curriculum at schools. They're not in the UK. I don't know about the US or Canada. Thank you for the kind words, Sean, as always. Um, I do work in a school, um, but I do not teach. Uh, and yeah, I do think it'd be kind of cool if the outdoor stuff was more a part of the curriculum. It's not formalized in the US. It uh, probably depends on the school. Uh after watching your trip to the Uinta Highline Trail, is hammock camping possible? I think, uh, let's see, Devin from Backcountry Exposure is not in the chat right now, but he'd be a great person to ask that question of. I think it's possible. Um, I think, depending on how many, like our, our group that we hiked um, the Uinta area with was pretty large, so I think that's one of the reasons why we had a hard time finding an area where all of us could hammock camp. But I think it's doable. Uh, depending on how many people are camping with you, uh, I think it's definitely possible. It might be difficult in some areas, but but possible. Uh, let's see. Hey, Scott. Do, 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 do. Hold out on those expensive trekking poles, yes. Mountain House Lasagna, also really good. Here in the Sierras, we hitchhike a lot. Uh, what do you prefer on GPS? Right now, I just use the Garmin Explorer Plus, Tom. And so that's why I use fairly exclusively. I shared the cost among the Joshes. And so we just kind of take it on trips as we need to. Um, that's what I use. It has a map on there. Uh, let's see. Lasagna and Chili Mac. Dollar Blazing. When will you be taking your family out for an overnighter? I do that. You just don't see it on the channel. <laughs> uh, when will I do it coming up? Probably in the spring. And so I actually have some uh, videos in the channel that you don't necessarily always uh, see, which is be you know just because they're a lot of video of my kids and I'm not quite ready to put that on YouTube. They're a little young. And so that's why. So I, I do that. You just don't always see it. JK is hiking says, I've only been backpacking since September. So I'm pretty new to all this. What are two or three weekend trips that would be good to try out in the Kentucky, Ohio area? I've already been to Red River Gorge. Another good area, I think, just make sure you don't get lost, is Big South Fork is another good one. As well as Kentucky, Ohio, Zaleski is another good area to check out as well. When am I hitting the Superior Hiking Trail? Um, I don't know, Rob. 
I think that'd be an interesting one to do. I know I've seen uh, Jason do it, and I've seen Suge uh, do it a bunch of times, but and I've seen you, of course, on the Superior Hiking Trail. Um, I'm not certain. It's not in the cars this year. Well, I don't know. Maybe we we might be hitting up uh, Michigan for sure at some point this year. Um, the MRT NCT loop has always been on tap, and we just always have gone somewhere else. <laughs> uh, any plans for a through hike is a question, and not a not a big one. Um, I don't think it's going to be a while before I can do something really big, like let's say the AT or the uh, PCT, anything like that. Uh, you know, you're talking a multi-month hike, but smaller through hikes may be doable. Uh, I know. Um, I have mentioned before that JMT is one of those ones that's always in my mind. Um, and, you know, smaller through hikes, 50 to 100 miles, something like that, I've always been uh, interested in. Uh, Trucker Cat Hikes, is our national park in Ohio a good place to, and then finish the question. Maybe backpack is what the question is. It just depends on uh, what national park you're talking about. But in general, no. <laughs> so the national park I think of is the one, oh, what's the run that I'm going to forget. I'm just not going to say it. But anyway, the, the one I, I'm thinking of that we I visited with my uh, kids that you have the ledges trail and why am I blanking on that? Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Um, I know you can camp in some of the areas there, but it's kind of disjointed how it's set up. I thought it was interesting to see um, the hikes that I did there with my family. Um, how it works. I don't think that's a great place to backpack. Zaleski and Wayne National uh, Forest are two good areas, um, as well as um, Ar Archer's, Archer's Fork, that's what I want to say, is one in Ohio. That's a good one. What year do I think you'll be doing the eight? I'll be doing the AT. Uh, let's see. Thinking about my ki kids, I'm going to say t 2045. Is that about right? Yeah, it'd probably be 2045 before I can do an extended through hike. Unless life circumstances change, I always um, know that's a possibility. But the AT, that's going to that's gonna be a while. Um, now, the potential to section hike it would be more doable since I have um, summers off. But that, I don't, I'm not sure exactly when that's going to happen. I've, I honestly have some shorter hikes that I'd be more interested in doing before the AT. There's just a lot to see. And I kind of agree with, um, maybe this is sacrilege on people who are on this chat right now, um, but one of the big things I'm concerned about with the AT is, is uh, I think the SBO brothers said this on their last uh, backcountry show, chat show, where they were saying, well, it feels kind of like you'd be hiking in Ohio for six months is what it would kind of feel like, except of course the smoky section and as you get up to, to Maine and uh, that area, uh, the Northeast but a lot of it would feel like hiking in Ohio. Oh, any thoughts on the fact that REI is now selling ULM packs or their Magna Quilt? I say good. I say it's one of those things where I think um, I may not, for example, purchase the Magna Qu Magma Quilt. I've seen uh, Bruce from Nature Calls backpacking channel uh, talking about that, but I think it's good that it gets some mass-produced stuff out there. Yeah, I've Michael. I've watched uh, Ape Man's uh, videos, the JMT before. Um, Tim, what is some gear you would recommend for a giveaway to raise funds and awareness for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation? I currently have a single man tent and some basic EDC gear. So, what is some gear I would recommend for a giveaway? Um, I think anything cottage. Um, honestly would, would draw a lot of people to, to, if you're raising funds for like a giveaway, so they, they donate to the giveaway. Um, I'd say something, anything cottage. Um, so like Z-Packs is usually a big name. People will recognize right away. Uh, the new hot trend is, uh, light AF, I think. So if you got some, some big cottage vendor names in there, I think you're more likely to get a lot of people interested. Uh, Rom's asking Superior Wilderness Designs packs or HMG packs. I've never tried the HMG packs, so maybe this is a little unfair, but I've seen them, and to me, they seem a little overpriced from what I remember seeing, uh, especially like their 
pod system and all the different pieces you get, um, I would rather have a Superior Wilderness Designs pack. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah, and you frozen would chime in. It's not like hiking in Ohio. <laughs> the AT is not. I've watched it. I just the the green tunnel frozen is what uh, I don't know turns me off a little bit, or a lot of it is like that. Um, I think um, I think that's the the thing that would draw me towards the PCT or hiking in out west more is because it would be it'd be different. And that's why I, I mean I enjoyed the western western trips that I do every year is because it's so like so different so foreign. Now if I lived out west, maybe I'd be like, hey, let me go hit up the AT. Um, don't know. Uh, Twenty five time flies. My daughter is fourteen. Hoping to do long trail. At long trail, I remember watching uh, Rob from Backcountry Adventure uh, Backpacking Adventures do the long trail in Vermont, and I really. Uh, well, he he is one of the first ones I started watching uh, when I was getting into uh, backpacking and hiking. Art Pelton One, who are you following the AT this year? Uh, I'm following Artemis and the Trail. I'm following uh, Frozen, and I have to look at my list again. I'm going to miss some, uh, of course. Uh, Underdog, I think, on the AT. I'm watching as well as Iron OG Outdoors. He actually came to the backpacker uh, meetup in Mohican. This year and so it's different when you uh when you meet someone in person then you're i feel like you're invested in in watching them and seeing what they do and so he if you look at the community tab on my channel he's one that i have uh shared uh recently as he started going through his kind of at videos about what he's doing and so check him out if you have not all right, see you later, Scott. And so one other piece of backpacking gear. We're going to close up here in about, uh, let's see how long I've been on, 15 minutes, about 10 minutes or so. And so thanks to you, thanks to those of you guys who did come out to the REI meetup uh, at Endeavor Brewing in Columbus. That was a lot of fun. I'm hoping, uh, I don't know if Alex is still in the chat, but I'm hoping we can do it in a bigger venue and have even more people come out. Um, that was just a really cool discussion to have other YouTubers as well as people just talking about backpacking in general. And uh, it's something that I hope that we can continue to, to do. And, and uh, I don't know, it was, it was cool to see, like we did some giveaways and stuff like that. People got to go home with stuff and it was, it was just a fun experience. Um, no one asked, I think gear purchases, people asked me about the one thing I'm looking forward to. I think I'm, I'm going to try is the Thermarest Uberlight. And you guys know my experience that I had with the uh, Big Agnes AXL uninsulated. But the Thermarest Uberlite interests me. I'm not sure. You know, I've been looking, you guys know, since uh, the Big Agnes AXL uninsulated. Since then, I've been looking for kind of like a summer pad or a warmer weather pad where I really don't need the X-Therm. A lot of times with the X-Therm, which I do tend to use year round, I end up sleeping kind of off of it in my hammock because I don't need that much reflection or, or heat at all. Um, but the Uber light seems to, to fit the bill. Uh, I think the R value is, I don't want to miss misstate it, but I think it's like a shade under two, uh, or maybe a, a shade over two. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, let's see what else do I have on here? I think I covered most of it. There you go. Uber light only has a two R value. Uh, yeah, Alex is in, is in the chat. So yeah, I think we should do the REI meetup again. I think we, it's funny cause I, I told him, I know we, we capped the, because the size of the venue was only 45, um, uh, people, but I think we had more people that if we had opened it up and had an even bigger venue, I think we could, I think we could fill it between myself, uh, super Josh and the, uh, SBO Shield brothers outdoors. I think we could have easily filled it. And the brewery was a, was awesome. It really was. Uh, Dizzy Mage is asking about ULA backpacks out of Utah. I had no idea. I think ULA was in Utah, honestly. <laughs> ULA backpacks in Utah. Um, you mean like the ULA Ohm and stuff like that? Are they in, in Utah? Let me just check quickly. ULA equipment. And so I've heard... Uh, great things about ULA gear, of course. Is yeah, they are in Utah. I don't think I realized that. 
in Logan, Utah is where they're located. I've heard good things about them. I, I think they're a good, um, solid well-made pet. Lots of people have uh, good um, things to say about ULA gear. And so I, I wouldn't have any concerns about purchasing one. I remember when I looked into it that it seemed a little heavy to me uh, compared to like other options that were out there. Uh, but to each their own. So I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, yep, Syntax does wrap the ULA gear a lot. All right. I think we're about to, to close up here. We're, we're closing in an hour, and I hope to do this again. Especially one thing that made me think about it more is because uh, I know Frozen is going to be on the AT, and so he is kind of the one who has been doing a lot of the live shows and a lot of the live streaming, so I wanted to make sure that we kind of filled that gap if we could and continue to talk about backpacking gear, news, answer your questions, and um, talk about whatever kind of comes up. And so hopefully the free flow of the um, those of you guys who are watching the replay or who knows, I know some people listen to their cars and listen to it more like a podcast uh, than a video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. You had a lot of questions answered. And thanks to those of you guys who are in the chat um, commenting, asking questions. It's always a fun time. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.